Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America, the Nations. I'm Walter Zagrevich, and I am being joined by Reverend Albert Ramirez. Before we go further, please take a quick moment. If you're watching us on Facebook, press a little share button right now. And if you are watching us on uh, YouTube, please share the link. Please sign up to our YouTube channel. It is free. Allow notifications so that you may be notified every time we're on here. If you're watching us on LinkedIn, thank you for joining us. And do share this broadcast. If you're watching us on our webpage, likewise, please share the broadcast. And do sign up for our occasional newsletter. Well, thank you for joining us as we continue to pray for America, for the nations, and for your needs. So if you have a need, write us. Write to me or write Brother Albert while we're on the broadcast. If you don't uh, manage to do that during the live broadcast, don't worry. We'll still pray for you. We take prayer very seriously. Brother Albert, welcome. Amen. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to get together with the saints, to pray together, to believe together, to stand in agreement when we pray. Um, it's good to see God move and um, continue to see God move. And in, in pr prayers that we pray specifically, you know, it's always nice to see God moving. Um, it's always nice to hear the praise reports. You know, the testimony, you know, the word of God talks about in, in, in the 12th chapter of uh of a revelation about we defeat the devil with a excuse me the word of the word of our test but word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb excuse me testimonies are good because they they give testimony to the power to the authority of jesus uh the christ that is now not the christ before the cross or even on the cross but the christ after the cross the, the redeemer, the one that's the risen Christ, the one that's full of power, the one with fire in his eyes and a two-edged sword in his mouth. That's that's the perception I like to keep in my mind of the Lord Jesus Christ in in in, in the way he is now, um, uh, where he's at the right hand of the Father. And again, like I said, when he returns, he will have fire in his eyes, two-edged sword in his mouth, which I believe is the word of God and be speaking things that will but that will either, that will tear down or build up, but words words very powerful and our words and prayers as we pray together, in agreement, believing, <clears throat> God answers and God moves and God God confirms that and, and and that same Christ, that same Christ that that is the resurrected Christ now as He is now so are we in this world it was at First John four seventeen says, as He is not as He was. But as he is now, the Redeemer, like you said, on the right hand of the Father, uh, with all authority and all power, like you said in, in, in uh, Matthew 28, all authority and all power have been given unto him. So um, I, I love this. I love to think of him that way. And, and, and we need to think of him that way. Too many times that the saints, I think if they're thinking in the past of how he was, you know, uh, before the cross and all the suffering he went, and, then, and even on the cross, which I'm not saying they're not important, to look at that, to remember the cross, but it's the power that comes from uh, knowing and being conscious of the fact that that as he is now, so are we in this world. I mean, the scripture says that we're supposed to be conscious of that fact, that as he is now, the resurrected Christ with all power, all authority, all dominion, uh, has the keys of hell and death, well, Revelation 118 says, uh, that's, that's, that's the perception, that's the that's the conscious thought we should have of Christ right now, I believe. Amen. Well, Christ uh, died on the cross, but he did not remain on the cross. And though he is put on in figurines and in statues and uh, in some churches as a Christ hanging on the cross, he resurrected from the dead. He's yeah. no longer on the cross. That's where he paid for our sins. That's where he paid the supreme sacrifice of atonement where our sins were washed away, were blotted out. He paid the price that we should have paid, but could not have paid with his sinless blood. But you are 
absolutely correct. Uh, Christ is not hanging on the cross right now. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father in power and glory. And it is that resurrection power that uh, he manifests in our <laughs> lives. And, uh, and, and uh, he quickens our mortal bodies um, through his spirit. And, um, you know, as you were uh, saying those things, uh, the one glimpse or, or brief vision, I guess I would say, that I had of Jesus was him like that, with, with like uh, just bright, uh, like, like uh, lights coming out of his eyes uh, and, and, and like that sword uh, out of his mouth. It's, that's, that's how we, I saw him. And and um, I, I I I could recall that, and I know that uh, he is uh, the word of God is powerful. And um, uh, something that uh, caught my attention, Brother Albert, on Tuesday, I interviewed uh, and, and spoke and prayed with Bishop Vasily from Zaporizhia, Ukraine. And one of the things that he underlined was the strength of the propaganda. And um, and that and that he mentioned the importance of preaching, and I realized, although I I knew that and I speak about that, you speak about that, but he told me how that in the occupied areas, some of the people that are escaping from there, they've already been tainted with three four months of propaganda from the occupiers on them. Um, for example, you know, they told some women uh, that um, we get to the Ukrainian side, they're going to cut you up and take your organs and sell them or whatever. And, uh, and so, when, I mean, they seriously were asking, you're not going to do that to me, are you, when they arrived? In other words, the power of the word positive or negative is very, very strong. And um, people keep speaking a lie People begin to affect people with that lie. You know, people speak the truth. That truth will set people free, the truth of the word of God. And so um, it brings me to the point of the importance of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to live the gospel, but Jesus very specifically say, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Well, the gospel, the good news of Christ uh, dying on the cross, resurrecting from the dead, empowering a life. When that is preached, that has an effect on people. That word of God will not return void, and that word will affect people's lives. And so we cannot stop preaching. And I think um, the uh, what came to me was uh, no wonder we have so many difficulties in the world. There is not enough preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so we need to emphasize the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ because there are power, words have power, and particularly the word of God. Amen. You know, it, you know, it talks about in Romans chapter one, you know, I think it's verse 16, where Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. It's the power of God. The gospel and that, and that you know, words we could we always have to seem to come back to the word of God, to words, our words, how the words shape things, how our words build up or tear down. You know, they can build up or tear down things in your own personal life, and corporately can build up or tear down things in, in a country. So, <clears throat> so it's our words that are, you know, like it talks about in James 3, uh, the whole chapter talks about the tongue, what a little member it is. You know, but it can change the one one translation read says it can change the I think it's the verse four it said it, it it sets on fire the course of nature in the King James, but one translation read says it can change the natural course of things, you know. Like for example, if a Christian's walking along believing uh believing the gospel, he's born again, he's in church, and then all of a sudden a war comes on. For example, maybe a Ukrainian, a war comes along, and if he's not doesn't have his eyes on the word, like it says that. Proverbs 421, I think it is, where God says, keep your, keep them before my word, before your eyes. You know, if they don't have their, their, not just their eyes, but their minds, their conscious minds on the word of God and what God's word says, it can be tainted. You know, it can change the, 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 the spiritual, natural course of 
th ways that your life is headed with Christ if you start listening more to propaganda, if you start listening more to politics or, you know, uh, uh, negative things in the news and things like that, it's going to have an impact because you're still listening to words and that word's going to will, will change the natural course of your life. And the natural course of our life should be according to the word of God. You know, the word of God should, should be what's, 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 um, controlling our lives, you know, and, and, and I've, and I've, experienced i'm sure you have and everyone has there's been times when we've gotten you know uh too busy in the things of god to where we take our eyes off the word of god and well when we do that we take our minds off of it and then because when i'm whenever i'm in the word and stuff my mind gets stayed on the word and i and i'm and my mind is thinking my thought life my thoughts are thinking about the things of god and the scriptures i've read and especially nowadays it seems like just revelation comes like on Andy. Otherwise, you could be you could be uh, you could be uh, a Christian and not pay a whole lot of attention to the scriptures, the Word of God, and 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 you work in a place and you could be manipulated by the world, by the world system, the way the world thinks and and, and the things they believe they believe in. You could be manipulated. Your mind could be affected by it. As a believer, your mind could be affected it, affected by you. It could cause you physical harm. Uh, uh, you know, those negative words, the, you know, witchcraft. I mean, they do a lot of crazy stuff in, 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 um, you know, in, the, in, in secular society nowadays, they, I mean, they're allowing witchcraft and, and all kinds of seances and stuff like that, even in businesses, you know? So if you not if your mind is not stayed on the word of God, you know, and, and it's your eyes are not, it's not before your eyes, like it says in Proverbs chapter four, um, I mean, you're going to, you're going you're to get affected by it one way or another, your mind, your physical body, your thoughts, you know, they're going to be affected by it. So it's so important to, to keep the word of God before us, uh, you know, and, and like I said, I've experienced time, period of time where I wasn't in the word as much as I should have been. And, and it's, and you start feeling an impact and that's when you start having to, to kick yourself and get back in keeping that word before your eyes. Well, you know, um, uh, it is uh, one of the, uh, uh, some of the uh, Orthodox Jews, as I recall, they have these little uh, things hanging over their uh, eyes. And actually, it's the word of God, you know, the law of God. Uh, they literally <laughs> uh, put it before their eyes. Well, um, to me, that's more symbolic. We have to actually read God's word and speak God's word. Yeah. And um, one of the things that sometimes we uh, uh, forget is when we talk about, or the Bible talks about meditating on God's word, um, that uh, in the Jewish tradition, they not only thought about it as we think of meditation, but they actually kind of whispered it. They spoke it uh, in a, low, a lower uh, a tone of voice. So um, it, I know the power of hearing, but it's so much stronger when you say it. And I can attest to this because uh, for years I uh, translated for many different uh, uh, preachers and speakers and so on. And so when you hear that word, it has an impact. But when you take that word, of course, I had to speak it out because I was the voice that people were hearing and understanding in the, the foreign language. So uh, I would hear that word when I would say that. Well, obviously, that would stick with me more because I not only heard it, but I said it. And in fact, I was a mouthpiece to those people. And that has an impact on a person uh, with, the mouth, with the heart we believe but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. It is so strong. It is so important. And sometimes we lessen that. You know, there's, uh, you know, I hear preachers and they say, well, just pray in your heart. Well, I understand somebody may be dying and you not know, talk anymore, but, uh, but the Bible very clearly says, believe in your heart and speak with your mouth. There is something powerful about speaking out God's word, our confession of faith, our confession in Amen. the promises of God, who God is, what He has done, um, Brother Albert. Um, I, you're you're a, a teacher, and and that um, uh, emphasizes this area. And um, elaborate a little more on this. 
You, you, you know, for, for when, when you speak the word of God, when whenever I pray for someone, I'll, I'll speak the word of God and I'll pray the word over them, you know, and I believe that word. And that's, a, that's also something very important. We have to believe these signs will follow those who believe, believe, we believe what we're saying. If we're, if you're just muttering words, you just memorize, that's not going to have an impact because when, with, with, like it, it says in that verse, you just mentioned, it said, with the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made in Romans 10, 9, <coughs> It's with the heart you believe. And then through that faith that's in your heart, believing in your heart, you release those words. And especially if you release the word of God and the promises of God that you're praying for. For example, if you pray for someone that's sick, you know, you, the, uh, these signs will follow those who believe. You, it said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So, well, I say that word. I say that scriptures. I'm laying hands on someone to to recover. And I said, in Jesus name, I believe that your body is recovering. I said, because these signs will follow those who believe. And I go, and I believe right now, Jesus is touching. So that's saying that word, that, that verse, that scripture, Mark 16, 17, and then actually applying in, but the point, one of the key points of that is, is you believe that in your heart. Mark eleven twenty three 23 also expounds on that a little bit. Jesus said, whosoever, that's anybody, unbeliever or unbeliever, speaks to the mountain and, and does not doubt in his heart. That's a very key part of that verse. If you don't doubt in your heart, then the next part of the verse says, but believes, and of course that's with your heart, but believes that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have, Jesus said, whatsoever he says. That doesn't mean just the positive, but even the negative. When you believe it in your heart and you don't doubt in your heart, if you believe a propaganda, like like we had, you were talking about earlier, if you be, believe the propaganda that like that woman, you said that a woman believed that they were going to chop them up and stuff. If you believe that in your heart, of course, it's going to have an impact on your thoughts, your mind, uh, even your cause you to get people to get sick, you know. Uh, but you believe that what you shall you shall Jesus said you shall have whatsoever he he says as Jesus said it's and it's speaking to the mountain. So that mountain could be anything in your life, a, a circumstance, a problem, a war, you know, anything that's going on in your life. But it, it says, whosoever shall speak to the mountain, speak to it. Jesus, right. You have to speak to that mountain, not, not to God about the mountain. Jesus said, you have to speak to the mountain, the problem, the sickness. You have to speak to that same. Another example, like I said, if, if I, I've had the problem with a knee at, at, at one point, I just spoke to my knee. I said, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you took all my infirmities. You, Jesus took this infirmity that's in my knee. I speak to this knee, command that this knee to be healed, to be made whole, because Jesus took my all my infirmities and bore all my sicknesses. Matthew 8, 17. So I'll speak to my knee. I won't pray, Father, you said, you know, although I do pray that at times. Father, you said, you know, when I'm praying and I'm petitioning God, I'll say, Father, you said, and I'll remind him of his word when I'm petitioning for things, uh, you know, other things like praying for the, the war, praying for something else, but, you know, God's provision or something. So, you know, it, you have to speak to the mountain, believing in your heart. It says with the mouth confession is made with, with the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation or God's provision or God's manifestation here on earth. The power of God that's in us as believers the manifestation through us comes forth through our heart and our mouth uh, in speaking to the to the mountain, whatever that mountain might be in your life. Uh, yes, amen. And um, in that very passage uh, of Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, have faith or have the faith of God. Um, and, uh, and, and then he, uh, Jesus tells us that we, believe in our heart, we speak to the mountain. The word speaking or talking is mentioned three times, uh, whereas believing is actually mentioned once. So I believe, I think that Jesus anticipated our problem being mainly with the speaking part. Sometimes we believe in our hearts, but then we start speaking the wrong things with our mouth. Sometimes instead of speaking faith, 
we're speaking doubt, we're speaking unbelief, or we, we're just making a confession of the problem, which then amplifies sometimes the problem, at least in our minds, uh, just like the, the spies of Israel who went to the promised land. And I believe that their negative, their, their negative faith or their unbelief magnified the size of the giants where they saw themselves as grasshoppers and the giants just really grew in their minds because of their wrong faith or unbelief. You know, unbelief is like negative faith. Uh, so, um, but but just going back to something else, uh, sometimes people just speak God's word, and and there still isn't that strong faith yet, uh, Brother Albert. But the Bible does say that faith comes by hearing the word of God. And so maybe they're just kind of muttering it, they're just kind of saying it, but I believe as they do that and they allow that word to start permeating, because as they begin to speak it and keep hearing it, that word is going to create faith in their yeah. hearts because they'll get a, an accurate, a more accurate picture of God, who he is, of his power, of his ability, and their position in God as far as their authority that they have in Jesus Christ. Because that's one of the areas that I think there are are, there is so much misunderstanding is the uh, uh, the lack of understanding of who we are in Christ. And so yeah. the devil will come with a lie or will throw something or some words at us. And um, if we, you know, and we sometimes will fall for it. Uh, and so we have to be careful, even, well, in the case of Eve and Adam, well, the devil used words to, well, did God say, you know, so the words had an impact on her. Um, the devil came to Jesus to tempt him. Well, you know, hey, it says, uh, if you, uh, you know, uh, fall and, you know, uh, nothing's going to happen to you, won't you just jump off, you know, here, yeah. and, you know, tempting him to commit suicide. But the thing <laughs> is that, the devil used words, but we need to know God's word. And um, and you uh, correctly emphasize the, the need for us of staying in the word, of being in the word, because if we want our minds renewed, if we want to have the proper view of God, we need God's word, because that is how our minds, our lives are renewed, are they not? Amen. Amen. You know, you know, uh, uh, Romans chapter 12, 1, 2, 3, is be not conformed to the world, but be transformed. You can be conformed to the world by the world's words, by their right. propaganda, by their influence, by what they believe. You know, right. and they they believe witchcraft is normal. They believe it's okay to do that. Even in, like, my, where my wife used to work, she, but she, my, when my wife worked for the county, and they had a seance. They're calling forth the spirits from the Northeast in social services, in the building, on the clock. Oh, give me a break about that, you know. So it's, you know, uh, so that's the way the world thinks. And if you if you start listening and associating and becoming part of that, you think like them. You know, you you it starts changing your mind, changing the way you think and the way you should be as a believer. You know, but and then it says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it says in the Word of God to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I think it's in Ephesians four twenty three. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Or, 425 somewhere around there but it says be renewed in the spirit of your mind and, and and it's the word of god that renews our mind and renews our way of thinking and to think the think god's ways and to think of who we are the word of god informs us it tells us who we are in christ it opens our understanding to who we are it should act, at least it should if you're studying the word of god if you're med meditating and, and then that word meditate like it says in joshua 1 8 when God told Joshua that, the actual Hebrew word for the meditate means mutter to yourself. I do that anyway, naturally. It's the way I read. I like to read, you know, mumble, mutter the word to myself as I'm reading it. And you retain much more that way also. But but when you, if like I said, words will change a person's thought life. It will change the way they think or act. The, uh, in the world's words and also God's word. God's word much better because that God word much more so because it, like I said, it was, it was just mentioned earlier is that it transforms us. It changes into the image of Christ day by day from glory to glory and from faith to faith. That's what the word of God says. 
You know, mm -hmm. we're transformed into his image. We're to be conformed to his image. And, 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 and like, like we started out with First uh, John 4, 4, 17, as he is, not as, as he is now the resurrected, all authority, all power, all dominion, the keys of hell and death, like it says in Revelation 1, 18, uh, death and death has been conquered by that. That's the, that's the, the, the conscious mindset we should have of who he is and who we are in him. That's why it says in 1 John 4, 4, that greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. Amen. Uh, absolutely. And um, Brother Albert, <clears throat> you know, people uh, face struggles and uh, people face situations. And we talk about praying God's word. Um, perhaps you could talk a little bit about that. What do we mean by praying God's word? Um, for I, of course, Jesus said that uh, that these signs will follow, follow those that uh, that believe in my name. They will cast out devils in my name. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They will speak in other tongues and so on. Now, um, Jesus confirms his word. So when we pray, we try to pray God's word. But can you elaborate on that? Because we say that we know what it means, but some people may may not understand what we're trying to say by that. Yeah, well, well, a good example is in the fourth chapter of Luke, where Jesus was tempted by the devil, you know, and of course, the worst world says, in, the word says in first John chapter five, Towards the end of the chapter, there it says the whole world is under the influence of the devil, you know, and it is in the world system is what the, what it is. The world system is under the influence of the devil. So, if we're listening to that system, if we're agreeing with everything in that system, there's a lot of things I disagree with, scientifically especially, uh, because it's contrary to what the Word of God says. That my mindset is, you know, people get upset with me, even family members, they get upset with me because I said, well, I look, I just don't agree with that. That might be science. Maybe you respect science more than I do because I respect the word of God more than I do science because God's word is above everything. God's word created everything. So we have to, we have to remember that Jesus, when he was tempted by the devil, he was in the wilderness in Luke chapter four, every response the devil tried to get him to manipulate his mind, to commit suicide, to turn... To use, <coughs> excuse me, to use his uh, his power that the devil knew he had because he said, "If you be this, if you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread." Because he was fasting forty days and forty nights, so of course he was hungry. So he 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 tried to get him to disobey what the Holy because people got, have to remember that the Holy Spirit led him into that temptation. The Word of God says he was led by the Spirit into that to be tempted by the devil. So that he, he was still anointed. He had power. He could have changed those, those stones into bread. But he was, the devil was suggesting that he do it, that he, that he just do it just to, to reveal who he was. But Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone. And it was the word of God that he was giving to the devil. It is written, every response, every attack, every lie that the devil tried to get him to say or to do something in that temptation, Jesus responded with the word of God. <clears throat> and when he responded with the word of God, of course, it says in the script in that same chapter that after he was tempted of the devil and the devil had no place in him, like he says in, other, in John chapter 16, the devil had no place in him. So the devil left. And then it says that, that when he went through that trial, when he went through that test, he came out of there in the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, you know, sometimes we go through tests or trial. And, 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 and it's, guess who's testing what we believe in? It was the devil testing what Jesus believed in. If you be the son of God, we are sons of God. That's the consciousness, the conscious mindset we should have is that we are sons of God. Bible tells us that. First John chapter one, uh, verse, <laughs> verse 12. <coughs> First epistle of John chapter three, verse one, two, and three. I mean, we are sons of God. The scriptures tell us throughout the New Testament, especially, you know, um, but it, we can't. We have to realize that it's it's the, the the world system set up by the devil that's trying to change the way we think through the world's the words, the news media, every the you know the world system in our uh, through our employment or whatever is trying to trying to change the way you think of who you are in Christ. 
They try, they want you to, the devil doesn't want you to believe the word of God, doesn't want you acting on the word of God, doesn't want you believing it, especially that. And he, you know, he doesn't want you confessing it. He doesn't want you saying it. He doesn't want you praying it. And it says in Mark uh, 414, uh, that, that the sower sows the word. The way we sow is we pray it. We pray the word. We speak the word. We speak the word of God to this mountain, to the circumstance, to the war, to our ailments. We speak to our ailment, not to God about what's happening, but we speak words to our ailments, to the mountain, to the disease, because he took, you know, Psalm 103, verse 4, he, you know, who, who heals all our diseases, he says. So we speak that word, you know, for any disease that might be in your body. And some people say, well, I did that. It didn't work. Well, that's obviously because you didn't believe it. You know, if, if you don't believe what you're saying, like you said in Mark 11, 23, you're not going to have what you say. But it's the bottom line. If you believe it in your heart and you, if you say to the mountain, what positive or negative, you know, uh, I mean, believer or unbeliever. And if you say to the mountain, if you say whatever you believe, positive or negative, that Mark 11, 23, you shall have whatsoever you say, not just the good thing. So whatever you're believing in your heart and not doubting in your heart, you're going to have, you know, so it's very, and, and, and the whole thing, the whole process is being renewed in our minds. It, the scripture tells us to be renewed in mind, not to be conformed to the world, the world system, but to be renewed in the spirit of our minds, it says in another place. So our minds are to be renewed, to know who we are in Christ and know what we can do through Christ Jesus and also what we can do through the word of God and what, through the promises of God, what he says we can do. Amen. And uh, Brother Albert, just so people don't think we're anti the science here, or we don't believe in science. The, the the fact of the matter is that science evolves, and uh, it is a quest for truth. It is a quest for uh, it is a trying to discover things. And how many times have gone back and said, "No, we were wrong about that," and now we understand things differently. I mean, for example, medical science back a uh, um, hundred years ago or two hundred years ago, uh, there were some things, many things they did not know that we know now. And so uh, if you were to follow what they said, that was the science at that day. Right now, they think you're you're a fool. Um, and because we understand that some of those things just, uh, you know, like bloodletting and things like that, uh, to, to thinking that that would somehow, um, you know, heal a person. I mean, there are a number of things. I don't want to get into that. But the point is that science ends up confirming God's word, true science, when it's, it's, it's not biased, it is, uh, they seek the truth, eventually they come to the same conclusion that the Bible already gave us many, right. many years ago. So uh, just to clarify that, but, uh, but I understand what you're saying. We don't just take something that somebody says because they say, well, this is scientific or whatever, um, because men can be wrong and man has been wrong, but God's word is infallible. Amen. And understand perhaps everything the word of God says, but it is amazing how as time goes on, you see more and more things that are spoken of in the Bible, how they are coming to pass. Uh, when you look at Bible prophecy, how things that were prophesied hundreds of years ago, if not thousands, and then being fulfilled at a much later date, but in such detail. You take Isaiah 53, the suffering of Jesus Christ. Uh, that was all described way before Jesus came on the scene. And yet to the detail, it describes a type of suffering uh, Jesus, the Messiah, would suffer on Calvary. So that is, um, uh, so anyway, going back to God's word, God's word is infallible, and uh, we need to uh, believe God's word. We need to confess God's word. We need to speak God's word. And what we're saying here is we need to um, we need to pray God's word uh, when we pray over ourselves. When we pray over someone, uh, quote uh, the scriptures and and pray what God's word says about that need, about that problem. For example, you're praying for sickness. Well, the Bible says that by His stripes, the stripes of Jesus Christ, we were healed. Jesus already paid 
for our healing. So there is that uh, uh, very powerful, um, powerful statement. So it's already paid for. It's already done by Jesus Christ. And so we have to believe that. And isn't that correct, Brother Albert? Amen. Amen. You know, and, and to, uh, you know, it, it comes down, like you mentioned about we're not against science. You know, well, God, guess who gave these scientists the knowledge that they have? You know, it's what God chooses to reveal to them, the knowledge that they have. So, it, it, you know, in, in there's, there's so much of that knowledge that they've already gained, and they, they, they try to, like, paraphrase it or rephrase it, and the whole time it's the word of God that they're talking about. You know, uh, you know for example, like the laws of physics, you know, there's a, you know, uh, I mean, quantum physics, I mean, you've got, you got, you know, there's science, you know, Max Planck, the, the father of, 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 um, of, you know, of physics, you know, the, the Max Planck, he's the father of, uh, what did I just say? Um, anyway, he's, he said, and they, they've studied uh, the laws of physics, and they saw that when you look at an atom, you see the neutron going around it and, you know, stuff like this. And they th always thought it was like a, a particle, you know, like it was, it was solid, it was real. But it turns out it was like, a, it's like a, like a, like a cloud, like a vapor, like a small vapor, what it is. And it says that they can't figure it out. Quantum physics, the, the father of quantum physics, Max Planck. But anyway, they, they said that the, when the scientists, they, re they recognize that whenever a different scientist, it changes. You know, which which also ties in with the scripture that says all things are possible. So, and and what one scientist even said, what uh, Max Planck even said is, is that there's in, in innumerable innumerable possibilities, which ties in with what God's word says: all things are possible to him that believes. In other words, you could change those those the laws of physics if you believe God, if you believe what God says, and 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 and, and it kind of ties in with what the word of God says. And, and if you're always looking for, for, for what God says, and, and what, one thing that's very important is, is how we esteem the word of God. We esteem it as just a historical account of God, God's people, God's prophets, Jesus, God's, God's you know, emissary. You know, if that, we just think of it as that and just think of it as a historical account and think some of it is fairy tale because, like, I take the word of God literally. I believe I, I take it literally to, to about, 99 percent you know but it, there is uh you know if, if, if people don't esteem the word of god uh very highly they're not gonna they're, they're gonna put other things in the world's system the world's knowledge before what god's word says <coughs> i always try to tell people that if, if they don't if they want to learn how to esteem how to esteem and and and, and to how to have a mindset about god's word <coughs> excuse me, uh, is to, to take the Psalm 119, take Psalm 119 and meditate on that word because David gives an excellent example of how he esteemed the word of God. And then, of course, you see through his life and through the record of what the, the books of Kings, you know, and Chronicles and everything, how, how his life exemplified what the word of God meant to him and also how the word of God worked in his life. So very important very important to to realize uh, or to highly esteem god's word and you know it, it, there's too many people i believe that you know even even in, in seminaries that they, they esteem knowledge just it's just human nature and natural knowledge more than they do the, the literal spiritual the spirit and life of god's word that's what jesus says his word is it's spirit and life so, I mean, it's how you esteem the word of God is what you're going to believe and how it's going to have an impact in your life. The word of God is how you esteem it. Praise God. Well, Brother Albert, let's pray for people. Let's pray for um, the people that have needs of healing, needs of financial breakthroughs. And uh, they've heard what we've said here. And uh, we... Uh, know that we need to not just believe God's word, God's promises, but speak them. And even when we pray, we pray uh, reminding ourselves, reminding God and reminding the devil that what Jesus has done on Calvary for us, 
in other words, we pray in faith, believing God's word and speaking God's word over that need. Would you pray for people? Because there are people, some watching now, some that will be watching later who have a need, who need a breakthrough, and uh, it'd be physical, financial, spiritual, uh, familial. Uh, there are situations that people are facing and they need God's intervention right now. Would you pray? Man, you know, uh, praise God for his goodness. I mean, like I said, it's so important to pray the word of God. It's so important to believe the word of God because it also, it builds your faith to receive from God. So this, that's also important to receive from God. By faith, we receive from God the things of God. It's so important for us to build our faith through the word of God so that we can receive healings. We can receive God's provision and, and, and just in general, God's answers to prayer. So, Amen. So we'll pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, those that are watching, we thank you, Father, that we have the privilege of being able to speak your word to them. And in Jesus' name, Lord, we speak to them right now, those that are watching, those that may be sick. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over a spirit of infirmity, and there are spirits of infirmity, the Bible says so. We take authority every spirit of infirmity, of cancer, of tumors. In Jesus' name, every spirit of of disease, every disease, Lord, he says, you heal. I, I speak your word to those who are diseased with diabetes, with heart problems, with any other kind of disease. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over it in Jesus' name. And Lord, we stand on the promise of your word in Psalm 103, 4, that Lord, you heal all our diseases. You healeth all our diseases. That's what it says in the King James. Well, I believe that your word has healed them right now. <clears throat> by faith I release words of life, your word, your promise, and heal them of their disease in Jesus' name. And Father God, those that are, are, are sick or have broken bones or have uh, stomach problems, heart problems, in the name of Jesus, every spirit of infirmity is bound and cast out of their bodies in Jesus' name. Lord, I loosen, I loosen according to Matthew 16, 19. I loosen the power of the Holy Spirit, which is what's declared legal in heaven to the, to release healing in their bodies right now those that are sick those that are that need healing in their their bones their stomach their heart their kidneys their liver their bladder their prostrate i loosen healing upon their bodies in the name of jesus and father we stand firm believing to receive lord the power of the holy spirit to create lord your word the holy spirit was in the beginning with you and he created the the earth and the, and, the, and the universe with you, Father, through words. You spoke and the Holy Spirit moved. Well, we speak your word, your promises to those that are watching, that are oppressed in their mind, and the devil must move in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit blasts them out in the name of Jesus. The minds of those that are oppressed, those that are physically oppressed or mentally oppressed in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just set them free in your name. In the name of Jesus, under the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be set free. Lord, I thank you for healing. Lord, you promised to meet all our needs according to your riches and glory. So I speak to the need, the financial needs of those that are watching. If they have a financial need, I speak to those needs to be met. Because you, you promised to meet every need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That's your promise I loosen the, the power, the anointing of that promise on those that are watching that need finances in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for, for the authority that we have in Christ Jesus. And you said we must first bind the strong one in order to, 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 to take over the enemy's goods, to take, take the goods. And the goods are families, marriages in Jesus' name. So we take authority binding every devil that... That's causing strife and division in Jesus' name in the families that are there. That's causing fear in the name of Jesus and the minds and the hearts of people, your people, Lord. We take authority over that spirit of fear, doubt, and unbelief in Jesus' name. We cast it out of them. And, Lord, we just release faith, love, and hope in them. We loosen faith, love, and hope, Matthew 16, 19. And we just thank you for that, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And we thank you, Lord, that you watch over your word to perform it. We just give you praise, Lord, and thank you for families being reunited. Thank you, Father, for loved ones, marriages to be 
brought together in love, Lord, and faith and hope. And Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for meeting the needs, Father, of, of all the, your people that are watching in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for setting them free in body and in mind. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. And uh, if you are not saved, if you have not received Jesus as your Savior, today is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. Would you open your heart and just say, dear God, I am a sinner. I admit that I am one. I know I've done wrong, and I ask you to forgive me. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you resurrected from the dead, and I receive you as my one and only Savior. Save me, oh God, and write my name in your book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer sincerely, Jesus has heard your prayer, and he has come into your life. Now, do three things every day, and that is talk to God every day. How do you do that? We call it prayer. Just simply open your mouth, and if you don't know where to start, just say, help me today, Lord. And each time you talk to him, you will develop more and more conversation with him. Allow him to talk to you, to speak into your life by reading his word, the Bible. And thirdly, tell others. Talk to others about Jesus. Tell them you're a follower of Jesus. And something very important, you need to find a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church where they pray for people. And <laughs> that you, that's where you can grow in your newfound faith. Uh, but uh, keep listening to these broadcasts. Share these broadcasts. It's a way of telling others about Jesus. Uh, and, uh, uh, and Brother Albert, there uh, we have been talking much about Ukraine uh, and uh, the situation there. We've been praying for America, for Canada, for other nations, and we want to pray for Ukraine today. Uh, Ukraine is in a very difficult situation, as we know, and the war has not stopped. But in the midst of the trials, in the midst of the rubble, in the midst of all the awful things that have been happening, there are powerful testimonies of God's redemptive power. There are powerful testimonies of healing, of, of people being delivered, of people being protected from bombs, from shelling, uh, by, by virtue of being uh, in a certain place at a certain time, just missing it by seconds sometimes, by minutes, by hours, and uh, in other cases where something exploded near them or fell near them did not explode. And uh, we thank God that God is answering prayer, and we are seeing many people coming to Jesus Christ churches uh, being filled with people hungry for God's word and uh, realizing that whatever they had in this world is of little value when they're in a life and death situation, as many of them are. And so as they turn to God, they realize the most important thing is life and eternal life. And so many are turning to Jesus Christ. Many are being saved. Many lives are being transformed. But in the midst of all this, there are, is a lot of suffering. There is a lot. There are many children who have been badly affected by the war. There are many families who to this day are separated because of the war, where the father, the husband uh, is out fighting in the front lines or just involved in working, and can, uh, but the family has been sent someplace else, evacuated, maybe in Ukraine, some other city, or many of them even in other countries. And we want to pray for those. Uh, we want to pray for the protection of those frontline pastors, frontline volunteers who continue to risk their lives going to these towns and villages to bring help to the people and to rescue the ones that uh, want to get out and, and uh, can get out. And so uh, we continue to pray for that. We continue to support these uh, pastors uh, as they can do this work. We're sending finances for them to buy food, to put fuel in their vehicles, to get out there, to rescue people, to take the food, to get uh, the diapers. Some places, they need diapers for the kids. There's no store operating stores. 
Uh, some of these towns, there's no operating store, there's no uh, water, no running water, no electricity, no gas. I don't know how the people are surviving, but they are. I guess they're very, very resilient and uh, they need our help. And they're getting not just the physical bread, they are getting that. We're making every effort to provide that, but they're also getting the spiritual bread. They're uh, turning to Jesus Christ. They're hearing about Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, many people that did not pray before are praying now. And uh, uh, we have testimony after testimony, wherever there's a believer, whether in the army or out uh, someplace in the front uh, areas of the, of, the, of the war, they are being used by God to <clears throat> influence themselves around. People are seeing that as they pray, God is meeting needs. God is providing. God is protecting. And so we thank God uh, for the believers that are out there, for the pastors who continue to stay out there, uh, risk, uh, risking their lives. I mean, uh, Pastor Sergei, whom you know, uh, Brother Albert from Poltama, uh, he's been in several shellings now. The other day he got to one village, I think it was yesterday, and uh, they were shelling. So the people all hid and had to wait for a little bit till the people came out of their uh, basements and, uh, and, and shelters uh, out. Uh, they were afraid to come out to pick up their food because there was just shelling. And yet that's what he's going into. He's been in places where he's only one kilometer. That's just over half a mile away from where the Russian soldiers are active. Uh, and so uh, uh, you could hear the shelling in some of the videos he sends me. And um, it, it is not an easy situation, but in the midst of that, God is working, God is moving, and the devil is not going to have the victory. Jesus Christ is going to build his church no matter what, and the church is going to get stronger. And in fact, I believe that we are seeing the opposite of what they were trying to achieve. We're seeing the church getting stronger. We're seeing many, many new people coming to Jesus Christ. So the very thing they were trying to stop and destroy the move of God, the churches, and some of you don't realize this because all you hear about is the political war, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the war, the physical war, but um, there's, there, this is also a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual war. These areas that are being fought over are areas where the gospel has entered in the last number of several years and has powerfully impacted people. Many churches have been started in these areas <clears throat> and the devil hates that. The devil is trying to stop that and he doesn't want that to spread out of that area the opposite is happening. The gospel is getting stronger. More people are coming to Jesus Christ. And the people that were dispersed from that area, well, the believers are carrying the gospel with them wherever they go. And so as the dispersal in Acts, uh, we see the dispersal of the Ukrainians. Well, many of them are believers and they're spreading that gospel message to the nations and to the regions where they are being taken as, uh, as they are evacuated. So God is working in a mysterious, you might say, way, uh, but his plans, his purposes are being fulfilled. Um, but we need to realize this is a spiritual <clears throat> battle and being a spiritual battle, we need to take authority over those principalities and powers. Isn't that right, Brother Albert? That's right, and especially corporately. I mean, the word of God says, you know, if, if one to put a thousand to fly, two would put ten thousand to fly. In other words, the more people, the more people. Number one is the more people agree. <clears throat> That's the prayer of agreement, like I talked about in, um, in, Ma in Matthew eighteen nineteen. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, when a person agrees with someone, they have to be seeing the same thing. <laughs> if you're seeing the same thing in your mind, if you're like, for example, if you and I are talking, we want to agree that God gives you a million dollars for the gospel. You and I have to see you getting that. They have to see it, believe in that you're going to receive that. Visualize it. And also then say, speak the word, speak the word of God over, pray, believe it. That's agreement. If you have a different concept of how that's going to come, that you're going to work another 30 years to get it. And I'm believing that God can supernaturally supply some, speak to one person, like he says in, in, in uh, Luke 6.38, he, he can cause a man to give unto you, press down, shaking together, running over, then that's not agreement. 
you know, so <clears throat> we have, when, when we pray together, corporately when we come against these principalities and powers we have to visualize them being bound when we bind them in the name of jesus we have to visualize that visualize them being cast out visualizing the war coming to an end visualizing russia uh, pay, paying reparations to reach to re, rebuild the ukraine what they what the enemies destroyed there and of course they will because the word of god promises that because of you know what the devil stole and that's what he stole their their buildings their houses and things so we have to visualize these things and and, and agree upon them agree upon them uh in our minds agree upon them with our hearts <clears throat> of course speak the word of god and things will be changed and things will things will happen when you agree on something praise god amen well let's pray for ukraine now let's pray for america and other <laughs> nations uh, uh, Brother Albert, would you lead us in prayer, please? Yeah, uh, Lord, Lord, we just pray for Ukraine and Russia. Lord, in Jesus' name, uh, Father, we thank you. We speak to those two nations. We speak to the ruling authorities, principalities, the powers, the spiritual wickedness in high places. In the name of Jesus, the demonic realm, the spiritual unclean spirits, these we, <clears throat> we war against you through the power, the authority of the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, by our dominion over all the power of the enemy, we exercise that dominion right now. We speak to you to cease and desist this war in the name of Jesus from Russia's point, Russia's part. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus, we speak, we come against you, we bind the principality's power of manipulating men and manipulating men's thoughts to ca cause war, to be, have jealousy or envy that for the reason of it, or Lord, uh, or envying and wanting to get more power, more of the riches than the of the of the lands. In the name of Jesus, we come against you, bind you, cast you out of there, out of that area, out of the leaders of Russia, even the leaders of Ukraine. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over every adversary, every demonic principality, power, ruler of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, cast you out. In Jesus, and Lord, we loosen, we loosen wisdom and revelation knowledge. We loosen the fear of God on those that are in authority in both Russia and Ukraine. We loosen the fear of God upon them in Jesus' name, Lord, and ask, Lord, that, that they stop this. We, we command that they stop it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you, Father. We loosen peace in the name of Jesus. We loosen revival in, this, in these countries. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, believe you that we are seeing and we're going to see greater revival in both countries. And Father, we just thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for doing that. We also pray for our country, for Canada, for Mexico, Lord, for Europe, in Jesus, Middle East, Africa, India, especially China. In the name of Jesus, we come against that principality, that power of that controlling spirit of communism in the name of Jesus, that socialistic spirit in, in Canada and trying to creep in in this country. We come against that spirit of lawlessness and socialism, that spirit of communism in Jesus' name. We bind you and cast you in the outer darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we loosen peace in the name of Jesus. We loosen the fear of God in these countries, Lord, all of these different countries in the name of Jesus, Lord, we loosen your provision. We loosen the liberty of the Holy Spirit in these countries. And Lord, where the liberty of the Spirit is, Lord, there's, there's, there's creativity, there's blessing. And Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, we are still the salt of the earth. We are still the light of this earth. So as we decree this, as we agree upon these prayers, we, as we agree and stand on the promise of your word of destroying the works of the enemy, the devil in Jesus' name. Lord, even so, it's being done right now by angels, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, by words, by the two-edged sword in our mouths, from our hearts, decreeing and declaring in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We thank you for doing it, Lord, in Jesus' name. We just humble ourselves as Americans, Lord. We also humble ourselves. A lot of pride in this country, Lord. But we just humble ourselves, and Lord, we just in 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 uh, for our country, Lord, in Jesus' name, we just humble ourselves in representing our country as a whole, Lord. Us believers, we humble ourselves, Lord. A lot of pride in this country, Lord, and and that 
pride comes before a fall. So we don't want a fall here, Lord. We just humble ourselves before you, Father, in Jesus' name. And we humble ourselves as a country. And Lord, we repent of all our sins and the sins of those of other countries too, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Lord, for forgiving us. We ask you to forgive our country, to forgive other countries their sins. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you will step in. And Lord, your kingdom will come on earth in these in our country and in Russia, Ukraine, Europe, Middle East, Lord, especially the peace of, for the peace of Jerusalem, we pray, Lord, but also for Canada, Mexico, South America, Africa, India, Lord, and, um, and the, the, the Far East countries, Lord, in Jesus' name, Father, and, and South America, Father, we just praise you, thank Cuba, we thank you, Lord, we come against that spirit of communism that is there in that country too, and cast you out, and loosen peace, loosen liberty, freedom, in Jesus' name, in these countries, and Lord, we, as these, as these countries get in line with your word, they get in line in agreement with your, with your promises, Lord, I thank you that they will, they will become prosperous and blessed financially. Their economies will turn around and our economies will turn around, Lord. And those that don't agree with, around the world, Lord, and those that do not agree, Father, with your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven, Lord, you remove them, you deal with them, save them, change their mind, or just remove them, Father, and put someone in there that will agree with you in your ways and your 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 spiritual laws in Jesus name and we just thank you for it we believe it we receive it done in Jesus name amen man amen and father we thank you for hearing our prayers we thank you for answering our prayers and we thank you for the manifestation we will soon see in the name of Jesus Christ Thank you, Lord, for unleashing the armies of heaven to go forth and do battle against the forces of Satan and his minions in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for releasing your angelic armies on behalf of your people in this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we just thank you for that. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to take part in our humanitarian relief efforts in Ukraine, please do not hesitate. Please do not hold back. The needs are tremendous. Go to our webpage right now, globalvisionministries.org. You see that right above me. And uh, press the donate button, designate Ukraine. The needs are great. And God will reward you as only he can. If you want to do by check, send it to Global Vision Ministries, PO Box 5377, El Dorado Hills, California, 95762. <laughs> God richly bless you. Thank you, Brother Albert. And folks, thank you for joining us. Share this broadcast. And remember, don't look at how big your needs are. Look how much bigger God is. Don't forget Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever.